You excited to go diving? I'm so excited. A little nervous. Hey, what are you gonna do if a shark attacks us? Oh, that's why I carry a needle. Jab it in the eye. <laughs> what if that doesn't work? Hmm. We pull our anchor at sunrise and then enjoy a three hour sail as we head to the dive site. Today, we're beginning Lisa's advanced scuba diving training. How's that look? I can see anything. Nope. Are you excited to go shark diving? Yeah, I really am excited. I'm excited to see a lot of them, a little nervous and a little rusty, but let's get down there. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get geared up. We're going to slide in the water. We're going to go down the anchor chain. We're going to get situated and then we'll pull out the compass and start navigating to try to find the shipwreck. Mm -hmm. If we don't find it, we'll swim around until we get bored and come back to the anchor chain, come up the anchor chain. Sound good? Sounds good. So we're here today on a shipwreck called the Edward Williams. Edward Williams is made famous by a company called Stewart's Cove. Stewart's Cove is a dive operation here in South Nassau. I think Rob Deerdeck came here one time when he had a shark bite suit that he wanted to test. And they do shark feedings on top of the deck of the shipwreck. So we found the shipwreck on the map. We drove 18 miles to get here this morning. So the dive plan is, is Lisa and I are gonna drop down to 60 feet. We're gonna spend 30 minutes looking for the shipwreck, exploring the shipwreck, and then we're gonna navigate back to the boat. Are you gonna wear a hat? I'm gonna wear a dive hat so that way my hair doesn't get wet. I'm gonna try to keep my luscious locks. You know a lot of people are gonna see this video, right? Can you even tell? I have wearing so much stuff anyways, like a bandana. Yeah, I'm gonna be wearing a hood. dive, a diver must equalize their ear pressure with the outside water pressure as it increases. Lisa has difficulty equalizing her ears in the first 10 feet. She signals to me that she's having some discomfort, so we stop what we're doing and we come up a couple of feet. Coming up a couple of feet allows the water pressure around her to dissipate just a little bit and allows her to clear her ears. You can see me suggest two techniques to Lisa, rolling her head side to side and rubbing on her neck to help clear a blockage in the eustachia tubes. A diver clears their ears by pinching their nostrils and gently trying to exhale against pinched nostrils. This is called the Vasalva maneuver. This works great in airplanes and on mountains too, anytime the pressure around you is changing. A diver should continue to equalize their ears every three feet until they reach the bottom. Once you're on the bottom, there's no need to continue clearing your ears, only if the depth increases. We set out today to find a shipwreck called the Edward Williams. We found a shipwreck called the Atlantic Breeze instead. 
We also were expecting swarms of sharks everywhere. We didn't see a single shark on the shipwreck. first dive to 60 feet. It's also our new GoPro's first dive to 60 feet. On older GoPros, I always used a red plastic lens filter to help certain colors appear clearer at depth. But I'm noticing that on the new GoPro, it seems like too much. I think that the new GoPro has software built in to help reintroduce red into the spectrum, making the filter no longer necessary. Take a look at these two clips and let us know what you think. Which one looks better?